Hi, this is Andrew Zizas, host of CFOstudio.com. We're lucky enough to have with us today financial executive Mel Epstein. Mel's got a diverse and broad background, having been CFO for some pretty impressive companies, including Saatchi and & Saatchi and Ogilvy & Mather. Mel's currently managing director of a firm called M&C Group. M&C Group provides business advisory services to small and mid-cap companies in the technology and media space around the country. Mel, it's wonderful to have you here. Thanks for being on CFO Studio. Andy, thank you. It's always good to see you. Mel, before we got started, we, we had some pretty interesting discussion. and You had some great analogies. Um, did I understand you properly? You equated the current state of the economy to scuba diving? You know, Andy, it's very interesting. I always um, try to look for analogies to see what would make sense to people. And clearly, the economy is in a very deep hole, very deep hole. And there's a lot of noise about whether we're coming out of that hole fast enough. Mm -hmm. And I have to relate that to a deep sea diver. Uh, I will tell you that I have never done that, but I have uh, watched it quite a bit and studied it a little bit. Deep sea divers, the deeper they go, the slower they have to come up. They, they come up with all this gear on. They have a huge amount of technology. They've got masks and air tanks and bubbles flying and flippers. And, but if they come up too fast, there's a real risk of the bends. They'll be in the hospital, they'll be sick, they will not be, that will not be a good dive. Yeah, yeah. On the other hand, if they come up at a reasonable, measured pace, they'll be fine. They'll recover, they'll be fine. And that's what the economy has to do, is come up at a measured pace. It's unfortunate, and I feel very bad for the people who are still in that deep hole, mm. um, but remember, that scuba diver, as he's coming up, he's getting fed air. Mm. And it's our obligation to make sure those people who are on their way up have sustenance so they can survive and get up. It's not a great analogy, but I think the point comes across. I know. I actually think it's a superb analogy because everyone wants the economy to recover quicker. Everyone wants it to happen now. I mean, we're in that kind of world these days uh, where people want instant gratification. And, and in this case, it's, it's severe. It's not just gratification. It's, it's recovery. It's, it's saving their financial lives. But the analogy is perfect because we, you're right, we need to come up slowly, carefully, we need to make the right decisions, I would imagine is what you're saying, and not just rely on the technology. Yeah, it's not just speed. The speed will do it wrong. And you know, your idea about the technology being a help but not being the, the, the single solution it ties into one of the other discussions we had. You, know, you had some very specific perspectives on technology and communications and uh, employment and labor in the corporation today. Tell me, tell me your thoughts about that. Yeah, Andy, you know, as you know, uh, my business has been involved in technology for a long time. I, I personally, I've been a CFO of some big technology companies. I currently advise technology companies. I'm very familiar with what technology can do for companies, and it's tremendous. Technology is a terrific tool, creates terrific efficiencies, reduces costs, and improves profitability. But any company adopting technologies has to understand that there are some downsides. Mm. There are some changes that occur in the corporate culture as a result of those technologies. And uh, you know, we talk all the time about the, the need or the lack of need to go into the office on a daily basis because you can telecommute. Mm. True, mm -hmm. very true, a lot of companies very cost effective. Now. Sure, sure. But the lack of going in changes the social re relationship. Um, the employees don't necessarily feel part of the social structure of the company. The company may not know the employee as well. Hmm. There is a lack of camaraderie, which ultimately leads to a lack of loyalty, in but my you, mind. Can't you get some of that camaraderie online, I mean, through, through technology? Uh, I think you can get some, but I think nothing replaces person face-to-face -face contact. I think you need face-to-face -face contact to reinstill the relationship. You just don't have that relationship. Hmm. So I think there is a lack of loyalty from the company to the employee and from the employee to the company. A lack of what? Loyalty. And that becomes very expensive. If employees who are very valuable, have a lot of corporate knowledge and a lot of corporate history, don't feel loyal, they may just leave the company. Hmm. That's an expensive change for a company. So I have advised some of my clients and what some smart companies are doing is coming up with alternate programs to instill a personal relationship, hmm. more loyalty among people. Um, certainly web conferencing helps, uh, certainly communications, and intranet helps. Um, there's no question that you still need periodic face-to-face -face meetings. Mm -hmm. None of that technology replaces the shake of a hand. Mm -hmm. You've got to do that. Um, but we do have to understand that technology is not only 
come into the office less and everything will be fine. You've got right. to do things to offset the change that that takes. So like the scuba diver who can't rely solely on the technology, there are decisions that have to be made and they have to be made the right way at the right pace. That's right. Exactly right. Exactly right. Very interesting. Pace is very important. Tie, tie the issue of technology into that of the, the, the overall economy. Um, you know, you started out saying that the economy is like, it has to be handled like a scuba diver. Um, talk to me about uh, you know, jobs, housing. Yeah, I, I, look, I think there's a direct correlation. I think it's a linear relationship. Technology has enabled companies to utilize fewer employees to get the job done. Right. We call it productivity. Productivity is up because for a given amount of output, it takes less labor hours to produce that output. It's wonderful. Very cost effective, improves profits, it's terrific for the company. But in an economy that doesn't have increasing demand, and that's what GDP mm -hmm. is so important, mm -hmm. if the demand for the products doesn't go up, then it takes fewer employees to produce the required output. Right. Fewer employees means layoffs, means unemployed people. And that's where we find and ourselves now. We're, that's exactly where we find ourselves now. So technology has been terrific from a cost perspective on an individual company basis, but not necessarily on a global economy, macro economy mm -hmm. basis. Um, there are a lot of offshoots to that, and we can go in a lot of different directions. One of the things that occurs to me is that smart companies are utilizing the fact that a lot of good people have been laid off. Mm -hmm. Some of these layoffs actually um, are some senior people with terrific experience, terrific background and knowledge. They're on the street. They're looking for what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, some of my clients and some clients, companies who are not my clients, um, have found that it's very smart to take in these people on a part-time basis. In two or three days a week, they get a lot of knowledge out of these people yeah. at a cost that is 40, 60, maybe 70 percent of what it would cost to hire them full-time. So it's reduced costs, there's no long-term commitment, the company gets a full benefit. The executive can do that and schedule himself mm -hmm. or herself. Um, and if he can pick up one, two, or three of those clients, those part-time situations, the executive is just as well off as before. So it's a win-win situation for the company who gets the talent and the knowledge at a reduced cost. It's a win-win for the executive who can pace himself, who has a variety of assignments, who can schedule his own. Who might be a retiree and doesn't who want might, to work for a while. to come out of retirement and still contribute. That's yeah. exactly right. Exactly right. Wow. So, so the opportunity exists all the way around. As, a, as an employer, I can get the best talent at a low cost and exactly. contribute to the economy as well. Exactly right. Uh, I think it goes, you've got to go a little further because not everybody is an executive. So some of these laid off people are you know, mid management or lower staff people, uh, and that's a serious problem for the economy. Mm -hmm. And what uh, some companies are doing are bringing in the people on a temporary basis or an interim basis. And people know that. They go into an assignment for three months, four months, what have you. And you know, it's hard to separate that problem from another problem that we have, which is the housing problem. If you look at the economy, you've got to say jobs and housing are probably the two big issues. Um, and I look at it in a very simplistic way. I say that a temporary employee can't take on a permanent mortgage. So you have people who are temporary, uh, and if they want to move and take on a job and buy a house, that's a 30-year commitment for maybe a three-month assignment. It doesn't work. How do you, so the question is, how do, how, do you get, uh, how do you build an economy of temporary employees when the mortgage industry needs permanent mortgage. And the only way to do that is if these temporary employees know that when this assignment is over, and by the way, it may extend, it may continue, but when it's over, there is another job to go to. Yeah. They need to know that so they're comfortable taking out the loan. The lending institution needs to know that so they're willing to make the loan. So it, it all ties together. Well, listen, we're out of time already. I wanna, I'm going to invite you to come back to CFO Studio, and I want to thank you for your great comments and great ideas. We're going to have you back for thank a second you. interview. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to us at CFOstudio.com. I'd like to thank Mel Epstein for being here, and you're going to see him again because Mel's got some great stuff, and I know he's just getting started.